Good morning YouTube, uh, nice to be back. It's a while since I did one of these videos. I'm Mark from High Rise Digital and in this video I'm going to be talking to you about just-in-time CSS. Now this is something that was um, quite a hot topic on Twitter when I posted about it and many of you replied and said you'd love to see how we were doing just-in-time CSS. And therefore in this video I'm going to talk to you about our implementation of it, talk you through the code, uh, what it does and how it actually works. So hopefully you'll find this interesting. If you want to listen and watch more videos on WordPress development, then please consider hitting the subscribe button below. And if you're enjoying this video, it would be great if you could like it as well, please. Um, if you want to follow me on Twitter, uh, then you can do. I am WP Mark, and I'll put a link in the description below. But let's get started with some just-in-time CSS. Let's show you what it is and how it works. So the concept with just-in-time CSS is that instead of delivering one or, or a few CSS files, usually in the head of a page, uh, and, and they are quite large files because they contain all the CSS for the site, the concept here is that we're actually going to deliver the CSS on the page directly before it is actually required. The reason for that is so that you don't get that flash of unstyled content and you only get the CSS that you actually need, uh, that that page actually needs, rather than having a, a big bulk of CSS that isn't actually needed on the page. So that's the concept. We have a, a, a block in WordPress. We've got the block editor. Each block can have its own CSS file and only when that block is rendered on a page in WordPress do we actually get the CSS that makes that block styled. So here is how we actually do that. Now to start with, I'm gonna show you my browser here. This is a project that we're working on at the moment. And what we've done is created a plugin. It's actually quite a relatively simple plugin. It's not a long plugin, and I'll show you that in a second, to actually deliver this functionality. And I'm gonna look over here in the inspector on the right hand side, and I'm just gonna make it a little bit bigger for you, then you can actually see it a lot easier. So bear with me a second, do another bump up. Uh, there we go, that should be much better now. So this is the inspector, this is the site in question. So this first section here is actually a cover block, um, and it's got a background color with a title and an image inside it. So if we find this in the inspector, so here's the main div, you can see here the first thing we've got is a link, uh, attribute, a link element, sorry, uh, and it's a style sheet, referencing a style sheet. So you can see here this is referencing a cover block style sheet and it renders directly before the actual cover block itself. So we're delivering the CSS directly before that block gets rendered. Uh, we've also got another one here. This is for a group block because the next thing on the page, if I scroll down slightly, you can see there is a group block. Uh, where's it gone? Uh, here, um, which is uh, containing uh, some information. It's got some text in and so forth. Um, so here is a, a CSS a group, a group.css file, which contains all the styles for the group block. And you can see that here we've got another group block but you can see we don't load the style sheet directly before it because we've already loaded it. So the system is aware of which CSS files it's already enqueued in WordPress and therefore it doesn't need to do them twice. I'm not sure if it would be a problem actually doing them twice apart from the fact you've just got more markup because the browser's already loaded it and it would know that. But we don't want that. We want it to load just once or be in the markup just once. Uh, and then you can see down here we've also created a similar sort of inline CSS, uh, just-in-time CSS for template files. So here we've got a footer.css file which loads directly before the site footer. So if we go down to the bottom of the page, uh, you can see here's the footer and it loads directly before the footer. So we get the styles directly before that as well. So let's have a quick look in terms of code on how we actually have achieved this. So we've got a plugin, it's uh, called HD, just-in-time CSS. And it is a one file plugin. As I said, it's not very long. And I just wanted to talk you through how it works just to give you the concept. Um, this code is also on a gist, which I'll link in the description below. So if you want to take a look at it yourself, then please feel free to do so. Once again, I'm just going to bump up the size of the text in the editor so that you guys can see a little bit better. There we go. So. I've got some normal stuff here, setting some uh, constants so I can reference files and uh, doing the sort of translation part when the plugin loads. Um, but this is where the main sort of bulk of the thing starts. So the first concept here is that we're going to register 
the block styles. So WordPress has this concept of enqueuing things, uh, registering and then enqueuing things. So the registering part basically says, look, here is a, a big list of assets, CSS files and JavaScript files that you uh, that are available to enqueue on a page. And then later on, we may well actually use those and actually uh, enqueue them, actually like output them on the page to be loaded. So the first thing we need to do is to add our list of block style sheets into that registered style list, that list of style sheets that were available to use, so that they're there and ready when we actually want to enqueue them. So this is what this first file is actually doing. Now, as a little caveat, we have a, a, a Mu plugin which has a lot of our block functionality in it, and one of the functions in that for every site we use is this HD get supported blocks. Um, so this this obviously requires that function because I want to I want to get the the list of blocks that we are supporting, um, and not like all of the list of blocks. So out of the box, this won't do anything unless you've got this function in here. Um, I can actually show you that function here where's it gone it's going to be in the plugins which is up there and it's going to be in here if we go to the top of this page so you can see here it's get supported blocks we just have an array of core blocks that we support which is these and then we have an array of third party blocks which currently just has gravity forms in it and then we have an array of ACF blocks, which are the custom blocks that we've built. And this function just returns that array for us. So it's quite straightforward and we get an array of all the blocks that we actually support. So let's just flip back to our just-in-time CSS file. So here we've got an array of all the blocks. We then check that we've got uh, anything in that array and then we loop through each of those blocks in the array. Now the concept here is that we're basically uh, getting um, a path to a file that has the CSS for this particular block. Now, in our theme, we like to split up these assets into core and third-party blocks. So we want different folders for those things, so we've got to treat them differently. So what we're basically doing here is detecting whether this is a core block. If it's got core slash in its name, its block name, then it's a core block. And then we're finding uh, the path of where that should be in our theme. So we've put it in assets, CSS, 05 blocks, and core. Then it'll be the block name, so cover block, for example. And then that's the folder it'll be in. And then the name of the file, again, cover, it will be the name, so uh, cover.css. So it's going to look for that file in the active theme, asset, CSS, 05 blocks, core, cover, slash cover.css. And that's the path that it's going to be in. Then we do something similar if it's an ACF block. Uh, advanced custom fields it will have acf slash as its prefix so we're kind of doing exactly the same thing except we're looking in a folder called custom here so it's our custom blocks not the core ones and then if there's anything else in there that's not an acf block such as gravity forms for example because it registers its own block we're going to look for that in a third party folder here again you could name those whatever you wanted to that's the, the sort of uh, structure that we've chosen and that we think works quite well in our theme and then we're checking if, if we've got a block name for this particular block, if that sort of function has passed those tests, then we want to locate the template for that. So it, does it actually exist in the assets folder for this particular theme? Do we have a, a cover.css uh, file? Um, and the locate template function will return that location, that address, if it's there. And if it doesn't, it will, it will be empty and therefore we can do nothing. So if we've got a CSS file for that, I'm allowing someone to filter the location for that if they wanted to do that and change the location for a specific block. And then what we're saying to WordPress is, hey, let's register that style with WordPress. We're prefixing it with HD dash and then the block name. So for the cover, the, the, the registered name in WordPress will be HD dash cover. For an ACF block, it would be HD dash and then whatever your block name is. We have like a content listing block, so it would be dash content dash listing. And then we're passing the URL of where the file is. So where is that sat, uh, sat style sheet actually uh, located? So that registers those styles for each of the blocks in WordPress. And you can see that's hooked into the WP head action. Originally, I had that hooked to the WP NQ um, uh, scripts, I think it's called, is the hook. Um, but that failed when we had the WordPress SEO plugin attached because it renders blocks in the head and therefore they were already rendered in the page and it got complicated. So adding it into the action of WP head means it happens after that and that solved the problem. 
So it's just a matter of ordering the actions and when things are fired. So that's hooked into WP head. <clears throat> so at that point, all of our blocks that we're supporting, assuming they have a style sheet in the theme in that location, will now be registered as a style in WordPress that we can then enqueue. Now, the next function actually is going to print them. So when that, just directly before that block is rendered on the screen, we need to print its its link, um, its style sheet link, um, which is the link element we saw in the markup from the website I showed you a second ago. So this is what this function does, is it prints those block styles. Now this is hooked in, I'll just go to the bottom of this, it's hooked into the render block function. So uh, when each block is rendered in WordPress, it fires a filter called render block so that you can change the rendered content of a block. So the concept here is that what we want to do is we want to add our link to our style sheet before the actual rendered content and then return the rendered content with our link attached to the start of it. So what I'm doing here is this, this um, function gets past the content that's rendered, so that's the rendered content, and it gets past the block array of this particular block. So that's all of the, the sort of attributes for this particular block. So I'm checking that we've got a block name. That, that should always be true, but I'm checking it anyway. And then I'm setting up some variables for the block name and the block base, the base being like core or ACF. And then what we're doing is, again, we're doing these checks to check whether it's a core block or an ACF block. And if it's a core block, we're going to remove the core forward slash element um, from the block name. So we've got a name, <clears throat> we're setting the base as core, uh, and then we're going to do the same with ACF. So at this point, we've got a block base of core, we've got a block name of cover, for example. Or if it's an ACF block, we've got a block base of ACF, and then we've got a block name of whatever we've called it. So we have a content dash listing is one of our blocks. And then similarly for the uh, blocks that aren't ACF or that they aren't core. Um, what we're doing there is just uh, uh, splitting that uh, string at the forward slash and then we can uh, set those two up as well. And then what we do is we just do a bit of output buffering. So if we've got a, a, if we've got a block name again, we start an output buffer and then we're using the WordPress function called WP print styles. So this will actually print that link uh, element on the page with a, with the reference to the style sheet URL and we're telling it which name from the registered styles that we registered we want to actually print so in this case it's HD dash and then the name of the block that we want to print so HD dash cover would print the cover block for example uh, here um, and, and, and because we've already registered it WordPress knows where that is and it can just output that on the page and then what we do is we at uh, attach that to the content, which is the rendered block content. So it's the actual markup in this instance of the cover block. Um, what we do is we output the object uh, buffer, uh, cleaning it, and then we pass the content in. So it adds, adds it before the rendered content. And then obviously we return that to WordPress. And as I said, it's hooked into the render block function. So that happens for each block. So essentially, do we have a registered style for this block? If we do, let's print that style, let's add it to the block, the rendered content at the start, and then let's return it back to WordPress so that that can be displayed on the screen. And that's how that actually works in practice. So just a quick look in our theme here, we've got assets, we've got CSS, and here are the blocks split into the different things. We've got our third party blocks, we've got form.css, which is in Gravity Forms folder. We've got a core folder, which has got all the core blocks in, so buttons, button.css, uh, code, all the different um, blocks that are in core. And then we've got our custom block blocks here. So this site has quite a few custom blocks, um, content listing block and a floated image block, etc., etc. Um, so that's quite uh, uh, straightforward. And, and then the CSS files are listed in there as well. So that's the block name as well. So that's how that works. So if if a block has a style sheet in the correct location, it will now be rendered directly above the block itself when it loads. And because we're using the print styles function, uh, print styles knows whether that's already been printed to the screen and therefore it will only do it once, which is nice. And then the last part of this is uh, a little bit of just-in-time CSS for our uh, template parts. 
uh, things like that. So this this function here is going to load style sheets uh, for a template if that style sheet is present and it's passed in the arguments. So if we look at our theme, let me just close these so we can get to where we need to be. If I go to archive.php, which is our archive um, uh, our archive uh, template. Um, in fact, is that, will that actually have what I want in it? Bear with me a second. Uh, yes, it will. So what here, what is happening here is I've got uh, get template part function, and I'm getting the template part for a card. So we have this concept of cards on this site, where if you're listing out on an archive, it's viewing each of the posts as a little card on the screen, going across the screen in like columns of three on a desktop screen. Um, so what I'm saying here is get me the template parts, uh, the card. I want the card-archive version of that, if it's available. And then I'm passing this a list of arguments, which we're actually going to use in the um, in the file, which is card.php. So we're passing it the content of the card, essentially. What's the link? What's the ID? What's the title? Et cetera, et cetera. And the last one of these is what is the style sheet name that we want to render just in time in a very similar way to we do with blocks, what's that called? It's called card.css. So what this function does in our just-in-time uh, thing is it basically it hooks into the action, which is called get template part, which runs directly before the template part is called. And what we do is a very similar process to what we've done above. So if we've got a style sheet name in those arguments, then we kind of start doing the same thing, set a path for for the style sheet. So we put them all in uh, a components folder. And then uh, what we do is the same sort of thing. We grab the path, we check whether that file is present using the locate template function. Does it have a location? If it does, then what we do is essentially build up the name and then we register the style and then we print the style sheet before it. Um, so that each of those, and that's how that footer one is working as well. So if I find, I showed you the footer one, let me flip back to the website. Here's the footer, uh, where's it gone? Is it down here somewhere? There's main, where's footer? There's footer. So in in our in our theme, we do, you know, uh, get footer, um, and then we pass it the, the link reference here, um, and it, and it, it sorry, we pass it the arguments of where the style sheet's located and it outputs this one here. So I think I can show you that in here if we go into, I think it's in base actually. So at the bottom here, we say, here we go, get to template part. Uh, what we want to do is get the footer template part. It's the site wide footer. So we've got a footer dash site, we'll use that. And I'm passing it an array of arguments. And the only one passing it is the style sheet name, which is called footer. So it's going to look for that footer.css file in the components folder, which is here. And lo and behold, footer.css is there. So that's what it's going to load for that particular file. Um, and then the last one is this is just a function for actually outputting um, an inline link uh, element to a style sheet if you want to do that. And you saw that on the archive uh, template here. So at the top of the archive, we want to load our style sheet for the archive.css, which contains the CSS for this particular template file. So that function allows us to do that as well, uh, which is quite nice. So um, there you have it, inline, uh, sorry, inline, just in time CSS for WordPress, uh, working quite nicely, loading style sheets directly before the block is loaded or when a template part is loaded. And we've seen some uh, some good uh, page speed scores with this. I think it really does depend on the website as to whether it's worth doing this for. Um, but it's certainly worth experimenting if you want to. And as I said, have a look at the code. It's linked in the description before on the on the GitHub gist. And if you've got any questions or comments, I would love to try and answer them in the comments below. Hope you found this video useful. I know that was a lot of information to take in. If you did, please hit the like button. And if you're not subscribed to the channel, then do that as well. Why not? You can catch all our WordPress development hints, tips, tricks, and lessons learned. So thanks for watching, and I will see you next time.